Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica, and a really special treat this week. We're showing you Iron Blood, an unreleased game for the 3DO M2. This has never been seen before outside of one 20 second clip on YouTube that was put up about eight years ago, but we're going to be going through the entire game as it is. Do me a huge favor, go down below and hit like and subscribe. This took a lot of effort to get it to you guys, but let's get right into the gameplay and check out Iron Blood. So taking a look at the game, you do need to remember that this is a completely unfinished copy. So some of the characters just do not have any attacks. Some characters have attacks that don't have any hit effect on them whatsoever. And some characters are fully featured and you can use them like you would in the PlayStation 1 version of the game itself. But graphically, this is a huge step up from the PlayStation 1 version. You have a fully 3D rendered environment versus the static 2D backgrounds of the PlayStation 1 version. So that's definitely a huge improvement. Polygon count on all of the characters is much improved as well, and as we'll go into the debug camera menu in a bit, we'll show you that there are real-time reflections off a lot of the metallic surfaces in the game, which is definitely something that M2 had that PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64 weren't capable of. This character right here, you can just zoom him right across the stage while using his block. He only has that one attack, which is basically moving somebody into that damaging force field. But we're going to get into the debug camera now and take a quick look at the models because they are quite impressive. So hold on one second, let me get there. Before we show you some of the models, I just want to pull out on the actual arena right here. And you will see that it is fully rendered in 3D. And you have that frame counter right up top. And you're holding about like 35 to 40 frames per second on average. And considering this is a, not even a beta, this is more of an alpha. The story behind this is this was a test done by the 3DO company and a lot of the programmers actually programmed the game. So this is very early in its development. But you will see if you look at the reflective surfaces of the knight here, his shield is going to have different effects applied to it as you zoom in and out. So there are some real-time reflections going on. That's a metallic surface and you can see into it, which is definitely impressive for the time and era. Now going into this other character right here, you can see she has great fully featured hands holding that staff. Then we come back out to the gameplay. All the animations are super fluid and smooth. Much better than the PlayStation 1 version. And then you get those particle effects and you even get real-time lighting as the knight crashes into that wall there and as she jumps around all of those different animations of her spinning look incredible and then you will see once she hits him with a staff you do get those real-time reflections which are amazing for the time let's get right into another character and check some more stuff out so with this character here there aren't really any attacks associated with them they can just really move around now i am working with somebody that worked on this game back in the 90s and their plan is to see if they can actually put some more stuff together so that it works a little bit better so hopefully we can actually make that work but you will see this model here the textures are a little blurry but of course it was only like a two-week thing so what can you really do but then you have this gnome character here that's got fully featured attacks he's got all his dives all the different blood effects coming from those swords so that's all great i will say if anybody asks i cannot release this it's just an agreement i made with the person that provided it to me so it's one of those things in the future if i'm able to i 100 percent will so just stand by and maybe i can make something work in the meantime i'm just showing you guys what i can and as you do zoom right into him right there you'll see that there's a polygonal notch out of his sword that's a really nice effect and even his teeth are polygons as well the eyes look a little bit dicey but hey you're not going to get that close in gameplay and this was just a two-week beta and if you leave the debug camera sitting there, it spins. So now we're on to the Executioner, and he definitely controls much slower. He is fully featured as far as attacks are concerned, but because of the stature of his character, when he rolls, they've definitely programmed in some slowness to him, so he kind of feels sluggish. And when you zoom right into his face, you're going to see that he's got those two eyes that are just sprites, texture work, kind of popping from his head. Now I will say, compared to the PlayStation 1 version, this version is infinitely more playable. The nicest thing I can say about the PlayStation 1 version is, thankfully, I didn't pay much for it whatsoever. It is a terrible game. Half the time your character is facing away from your opponent, or on this M2 version, your character instantaneously pivots to face their opponent for new attacks the minute that they fall down. So somehow, the 3DO company made this game better as a preview than the original PlayStation 1 version was as a fully released game. I also like the fact that when an attack lands, you get blood, but when it's blocked, you get those nice sparks and particle effects coming out that kind of denote what type of attack you're actually hitting. But the knight character here has a fully featured attack set as well. I would say that probably 80% of the characters you're able to select have attacks, and there are a few characters in the menu that don't have files associated with them. They're not in any of the directories I have or any of the build files, so I don't think we're going to be able to actually get that up and running again, but you never know. 
And then you get characters like this. I'm sorry, I don't know their names. I'm not a big D&D &D fan. I could have looked at the manual for the PlayStation 1, but the names really don't matter. But he floats and pivots through the air, and it's a really incredible effect as he kind of dives in and out of the background, as it is fully 3D. He has that sort of diving, spinning effect. And then he has the staff right here, which is a completely separate entity from his character. And if we go into that debug menu right here and look at the camera, you will see that there is a real-time shadow for his spirit self. So even the objects that the characters hold have fully real-time shadows. They're a bit blocky, but you know, for a 1997 build for console hardware that was in the 90s, this is extremely impressive. And from a distance, the shadows look absolutely amazing. And that's kind of the thing when you just play Iron Blood. Even that intro fade in, there's a lot of love put into this demo. There's a lot of different particle effects and everything else that just kind of go to sell the universe better than the PlayStation 1 version did. And one of the stories behind this build is it was actually shown to Nintendo when the 3DO company was trying to get Nintendo to adopt some of their hardware technology. Some of these particle effects were something that apparently impressed some of the Nintendo executives when they were looking at them because it's something that Nintendo 64 couldn't do. When you take a look here at that sword, it comes to a nice point, so you know there's a lot of polygons in use there, and all the textures are nice and smooth, just like the Nintendo 64 had, something that the PlayStation 1 and the Sega Saturn didn't when you had those really blocky sort of artifacted textures, and even those boots that he has on have extra polygons to show how big they are. We get into a character like her right here with this long sword. I even pull off a combo there, so there are some combos in the game programmed in, and then when we get her to pause here, Eh, not really the best angle to pause her at, so we're going to definitely go around the front here. But you will see that all of the character models have a ton of polygons. So this is something that the Nintendo 64, the PlayStation 1, and the Saturn were just not going to be able to pull off in 96, 97. And if this hardware had come out, it would have been a powerhouse compared to its contemporary consoles. And I just like these little dives here. They definitely move around really well. The characters have a lot of fluid movement. But this isn't the last bit of Iron and Blood I'm going to show you. I do have some more things that are be coming up soon, but I wanted to get this episode out and really show you guys what's going on here. And I will leave you with just a little bit of a look at the overall arena as you can use that debug camera. But I do want to thank the person that provided me these files and the source code associated with them. They are unnamed, and that's how they want to stay, so we'll respect that. But it is fun to be able to talk about what the 3DO company was like back in the 90s and be able to preserve and show everyone something they've never seen before and definitely deserves some press. Short of that, we'll be back on Tuesday with another episode in our mainline series, so if you could do us a huge favor and hit like and subscribe. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed this Iron Blood. We didn't show all the characters, so if you want to see more, just let me know in the comments. Short of that, have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.